We're creating vanity boards, you guys. Vanity boards. We ain't prayed about that thing. We didn't ask God for clarification, understanding. We ain't, we haven't meditated. We just going into these parties, drinking a little wine, and ain't nothing wrong with a little wine. Let me just put that out there. Ain't nothing wrong with a little wine. And we get caught up in the atmosphere of creating these pretty boards. And it's all out of vanity. Instead of creating a, vo a board, that's a visual representation of our purpose. Hey family, welcome to the Live In Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my podcast episode. I'm Lakeisha Woodard, your host, and as always, I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. As you may know, I'm a self-awareness coach who helps women pivot for perfection of purpose by creating an action plan that reconnects them to their dreams, their values, and their priorities. What you may not know is that the tools I teach you here on the podcast I share how I implement them in my daily practice on social media. If you're not following me on your favorite social media platform, I encourage you to do so. You can find me at Lakeisha Water across all platforms. In the meantime, as this year winds down, I want us to have some one-on-one -on -one time together. We're going to have conversations about mindset, clear vision, rebuilding confidence, and vision boards to prepare for 2021 by revisiting conversations I've had on my social media platforms. I know you're probably over 2020, but we still need to make every minute, every hour, every day count until the new year. That means we need to prep. And yes, we have less than 30 days left, but it's never too late to get started. So with that being said, please make sure to leave a comment so we can start and continue the conversation. Remember, a rising tide lifts all boats. So please share this episode across all your social media platforms. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Now, I am a huge self-awareness advocate. I'm a huge self-awareness fan because self-awareness was key for me on my journey to transition from victim to survivor of sexual abuse. And not only that, but self-awareness has helped me in many different areas. You know, self-awareness or just being more self-aware has helped me to, you know, get a lot clearer on my purpose. So I'm, I was able to stop chasing a dream that was not mine. Okay. How many of us are chasing dreams? That's not ours. Okay. So being more self-aware helped me to be able to build meaningful relationships. I was able to revamp my support system. Okay. Cause we need people that's going to support us to be who we are you know, authentically. And more importantly, self-awareness helped me to build a confidence that I need to walk in my greatness every single day and say yes to my purpose every single day, right? Because that takes a daily commitment. That takes us saying yes every single day, right? And so I just want to teach other women and a few good men, because I have helped a few good men as well, how to live a more purposeful and meaningful life by being just more self-aware, okay? Because at the end of the day, that's what we all want, right? A purposeful life, a meaningful life. The underlying premise of all our goals, even though all our goals are different, what we want is more purpose and more meaning in our lives, right? And self-awareness will definitely help us with that. Hey, Jess. Hey, girl. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on tonight. As you guys are coming in, please let me know your name and where you're tuning in from. Please, let this be, please interact with me throughout this live video so I can know that my technology is working well, okay? Because Instagram be tripping and Facebook does too. So the more you guys talk to me, the more I know that everything is okay, all right? So on tonight, you guys, I'm going to talk about the four reasons why our vision boards don't work. And please know this is not an exhausted list. 
It's not only four reasons. There's a, a, a million different reasons why your vision boards are not working. But I'm just going to talk about four to, tonight because our time is limited together. I want to hold you all night. So I'm only going to talk about four tonight. And I'm not going to, you know, say them in any particular order. OK, so please understand that. But I feel as though this this conversation is important. And I purposely waited until this time of year to talk about it, because this is the time of year that we start getting inundated with invitations to vision board parties. Right. Have y'all started seeing them come in yet? Raise your hand in the comment section if you've seen them, seen the invitations start to come in already. Right. And I just want to prepare you. We need to have this conversation before you go to your next vision board party so you can be, you know, so you can be better, better prepared. And then also, you know, towards the end of the year of every year, you know, we can get a little discouraged because we haven't, you know, achieved our goals for the year. Our visions didn't come, you know, into fruition, you know, by this time at the end of the year. And we tend to start thinking about the next year and start thinking about that new vision that we're going to create. But I just want to just have a conversation with you because in order for you to prepare for 2019, I'm going to need you to get a hold of 2018. Because even though we still have a couple of weeks left in this year, you can still finish 2018 strong. OK, and you may not want to admit it, but there's probably some lessons that you need to learn in 2018 that you need to take over with you in 2019. Right. So you could do something different. And so 2019 could be bigger and better. OK, so we are definitely going to talk about it tonight. Right. The four reasons why your vision boards are not working or they didn't work. So please share this you know, video with your family and your friends, because I want to get as many people on this video because I want to help as many people as possible. You know, um, last week I had a, a sister pep talk and someone sent me a message and was like, girl, I watched a replay three times. This video needs to go viral. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. So help me make this video go viral <laughs> by sharing it with as many people as possible. Hey, Monica. Hey, girl. Hey, thank you for joining me on tonight. I sure appreciate you. So I was just saying that tonight we're going to talk about the four reasons why our vision boards doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it with the number. Well, not the number one reason, but with the first reason <laughs> that I'm going to talk about tonight, because. This is not an exhausted list. So there are a million different reasons, but we're only going to talk about four tonight. Oh, well, please be careful while you're driving. Okay. I'm going to need you to be careful, please. Please, please, please be careful. Okay. So the first reason I want to talk about and why your vision board is not working is because you created a vanity board and not a vision board. Did y'all hear what I said? You created a vanity board and not a vision board because we are going to these vision board parties, right? And we are cutting out all these pretty pictures out of all these different magazines. And it's all just based on vanity. Let's be real for a second. We come out pictures of these big houses, these expensive cars, these Jimmy Choo's. Oh, okay, I'm talking about myself right now because I love me some Jimmy Choo, right? We got these Jimmy Choo's on our vision boards. And what does these things have to do with our purpose? What do they have to do with our purpose? Because you guys, our vision needs to be a visual clarification of our purpose. How does a million dollar house help you to achieve your purpose? We're creating vanity boards, you guys. Vanity boards. We ain't prayed about that thing we didn't ask god for clarification understanding we haven't we haven't meditated we just going into these parties drinking a little wine and ain't nothing wrong with a little wine let me just put that out there ain't nothing wrong with a little wine and we get caught up in the atmosphere of creating these pretty boards and it's all out of vanity instead of creating a, vo a board that's a visual representation of our purpose so vanity so is your board a vanity board or is it really a vision board? <laughs> I'm not trying to be me, guys. I'm just trying to be real. Yes, that's how I'm starting off the live tonight. Coming at you guys. <laughs> vanity board 
versus a vision board. And I know it's not your intent when you sit down to do your vision board. I know it's not your intent to create a vanity board. I know that I get that. But, you know, we get caught up looking through these magazines and we can't do that. So keep that in mind when you are working on your vision board is whether or not think about it. Are you creating a vanity board? Or are you creating a vision board? <laughs> Rose says she's guilty of it. <laughs> hey, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm in that category too. Who's bold enough to, who else is bold enough to admit that they created a vanity board as opposed to a vision board? Thank you, Sharita, for putting that in the comments. Did you create a vanity board or a vision board? Yes. Yes. Who else is bold enough to, to, to admit it? And I know I have. Rose was able to, to admit it. Thanks, girl, for being honest. Thanks, girl. So number two, the second reason I want to talk about why your vision board didn't work is because you don't truly believe that you can achieve it. You don't believe that you can achieve the vision that you have created on this board. Ah. <laughs> Those shoes were your vision. I came with you. <laughs> those shoes, those shoes were your vision. Was her vision? <laughs> oh, you guys, how many times have you put together a vision board and then you know stepped back and looked at it and thought, now how the hell am I going to make all this come true? That's doubt. That's you doubting yourself. That's you not believing yourself. How many times have you created a board and stepped back and was like, damn, who am I kidding? How am I going to make this happen? Right? That's doubt. You guys, our failures and successes start and stop with our belief system. Our failures and successes start and stop with our belief system. We have to believe that we are worthy to have the vision that's in front of us, that vision that's on that board that we created, especially if it's a purpose-filled vision, right? We have to believe that we are worthy to have it. We have to believe that so we can achieve it. You know, Henry Ford has the perfect quote. He says, whether or not you think you can or you can't, you write. You are right. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Right. And so that word can't, man, that's a word that I do not like to have in my vocabulary. And I learned at an early age to get rid of the word can't. Right. I can't do this. I can't do that. That's something that we say all the time, especially when it comes to, you know, doing something that's outside of our comfort zone, that's outside of what's considered normal in our little circle. We say that, you know, I can't do that. You know, it just easily rolls off of our tongue. And that's one of the words that I try really hard not to say, you know, and in my book, Shameless Plug, 31 Days of Truth, Manifest Your Passion, Power and Perseverance. There are three words I talk about in my book that we should eliminate from our vocabulary and can't is one of those words. And like I said, I learned really early from my grandmother not to use the word, not to use the word can't. You know, I ain't gonna lie, I was a spoiled brat and my grandmother was the number one person that spoiled the hell out of me when I was little. And so as a spoiled brat, when she would ask me to do something, I'd be like, oh, grandma, I can't do that. To try to get out of it. Whatever it was, it could be something as simple as, you know, go pick your shoes up off the floor. And I'd be like, oh, grandma, I, I can't do that. And my grandmother would say, can't is not a word. Now go do X, Y, and Z. Right. And so at the time, even though she was irritating me when she would tell me can't is not a word and then make me go do what I just said I couldn't do. It wasn't until later that I realized that she was instilling something in me. Right. Because once I got on, out on my own and had to figure things out on my own, I was dropping that cake bomb all the time. Man, I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. And then one day I heard my grandmother's words in my head, God rest her soul, that said, can is not a word. And that was the motivation that I needed to move forward. So we have to make sure that we are speaking life in ourselves 
because a word as simple as can't can create doubt in your mind. And I need you to be able to believe that you can achieve the vision that's on your board in order for it to manifest. Are you guys with me? Because y'all kind of quiet. Y'all got quiet on me. Are you guys with me? Hopefully I'm not having any technical difficulties. Okay. So number three. The third reason I want to talk about why your vision boards did not work. Number three. And that is because, okay, thank you. Thanks, Rose. Thanks for letting me know. And thanks, Sharita. Thanks for letting me know that Facebook is, is not having any technical problems. Okay, thank you, Latrenda. I sure, I sure appreciate it. So the third reason I want to talk about tonight on why your vision boards didn't work is that you gave up too quickly. Did y'all hear that? Because you gave up too quickly. Let me slow down when I say that. <laughs> because you gave up too quickly, right? You gave up too quickly. You guys, I know it took what? All of an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours to, to put together your vision board. Honey, it's going to take way longer than that to manifest your vision. It's going to take way longer than that. And we are giving up way too quickly. We need to practice patience because patience is a virtue. And we need to learn how to accept and embrace the process that it takes to manifest your vision. Okay. Thanks, Sharita, for putting everything, for putting that in the uh, in the comment section. Number two, the, the second reason why the vision board didn't work is because we don't believe we can achieve it. So if you could put that in the comments, that would be great. Number two is that we don't believe that we can achieve it. And then number three is we gave up too quickly. Right. We're giving up way too quickly on on our visions, you guys. And we need to, you know, take the time and go through the process of the manifestation of, you know, of our visions, because that process, you know, there's levels to the process. Right. There's levels of growth that we got to go through. There's levels of understanding that we need to go through. Sacrifice, disappointments. Like we got to go through all these things in order for our vision to manifest. And I'm not just talking about you, but I'm talking about me as well, you guys. This is a process. You know, I remember the day that I realized that I had given up on my vision because, yeah, I had I've given up on my vision. I'm not just preaching. I mean, I'm not just over here just on some pedestal. I have given up too, you guys. You know, because if you know my story, you know that I've always wanted to be an attorney. So I had this vision of me becoming an attorney for a long time. And the day came where I realized I had given up on that. This was right after I graduated from college. From college. Um, a little less than a year, I had landed, you know, a management trainee job at this corporation, which was huge because my undergraduate degree is in business management and my master's degree is in global management. So to graduate and find a job <laughs> in your major is huge. So I had this corporate job. I'm working in a management trainee program. I'm making, you know, decent money, you know, for that time period, especially just coming out of college. I got my own apartment, had my job. I bought me a car. You know, I was doing my thing. Had me a little boyfriend at the time that I had been dating for a little while. I thought I was doing my thing, okay? And working at this job, I got happy, I got complacent, and I got content. And I had gave up and forgot about this vision of me becoming an attorney. And I was at this corporate job for a year, year and a half, two years before I made the transition. And the reason why I made the transition is because I got a phone call one day from my then mentor. She called me while I was at work and pretty much told me in a nice little way, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what happened to you wanting to become an attorney? 
and having that conversation with her, you know, totally, you know, switched things around for me. You know, when I got off the phone with her that day, I was like all oh, discombobulated because I had already taken the LSAT. I had already taken the LSAT. I just hadn't applied to law school. So I made the transition. I applied to law school. I got into law school and I made that transition to come here to Houston, Texas. You guys, and that was like the best decision that I could have made. And no, I'm not an attorney right now, but not going back to my original vision helped me to start the process so I can get clear on the purpose that's on my life. Right? I had to go through some growth, you guys. Making that transition from Atlanta to Houston, I was able to grow into the woman that I am today. Our visions are multifaceted. I had to sacrifice some things as well. Giving up my corporate job in my apartment, that was a sacrifice. You guys, I'm from the hood. I grew up in a project right outside of Chicago. So I know how it feels to not have lights on, to come home and you don't have no lights. No cable, no phone. I know how it feels with Renna Center. Yeah, I said Renna Center. I'm aging myself. I know how it feels when Renna Center come knocking at the door because they want to repo your couch and your TV. And your mama is telling you to be quiet. So I have this corporate job where I'm able to pay my own bills. I was happy. I was content. So my light bill came in. I was able to pay the whole bill in full. And now I have to put a little something on it. You guys, I was content. So I had to sacrifice my... You know my stability i had to sacrifice that to make that transition from houston from atlanta to houston so i could become an attorney and i'm so glad that i did it because let me tell you something a sister's truth is the manifestation of my vision in action it's a manifestation of my purpose in action you guys it's a manifestation of my purpose in action have i had some disappointments Absolutely. This transition wasn't easy. It was hard. I left friends and family back in Atlanta. When I came to Houston, I didn't have a place to stay. I stayed with somebody. I literally packed up everything that I can put in my car. And at the time, I had a 1998 Chevy Cavalier Z24. Google it after this live so you can see how small that car is. Google it. I packed up my car and me and the bestie hopped in the car and drove here to Houston. So you're going to go through some disappointments. You're going to make some sacrifices. You're going to grow as well, but you're also going to get clear. You have to go through the process. So please don't give up on your vision. And the point that I'm trying to make is that if you have gotten to the point where you have you know, given up on your vision, there's time to get back on it. It's time for you to go back to it. It's okay to go back to it. I did. So you can too. As long as you got breath in your body, you guys, you can rebound and get back on it and go after your vision. But you just cannot give up because there are lessons that we need to learn. We have to go through the process. And I know that that's something that we don't want to do, but we have to go through the process. Are you guys still with me? Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Hey, Garbaz, thank you so much for joining tonight. Hey, Mrs. McBride, thank you so much for joining me. Are you guys still here with me on Instagram? Are you still here with me? Let me know, because I know I have IT problems all the time. Okay. So I see a couple of people just hopped on on Facebook. So let me do a quick recap. So please just bear with me. If you're meeting me for the very first time, my name is Lakeisha and I am your sister coach and also the founder of A Sister's True. And through one-on-one -on -one coaching, I teach women how to use self-awareness as a tool to live a purpose-driven life. And on tonight, I'm talking about the four reasons why our vision boards don't work. And so, so far we talked about the first reason, which is we created a vanity board and not a vision board. You created a vanity board and not a vision board. I'm going to need you to catch the replay on that because we talked about it tonight. The second reason why is because you don't believe that you can achieve it. 
your vision boards is not working because you don't believe that you can achieve it. Thank you for the hearts, you guys. Thank you so much. Okay. And the third reason why our vision boards don't work, which we just talked about, is that we give up too quickly. We give up too quickly. And also, please know that this is not an exhausted list because there are a million different reasons why our vision boards don't work, but we're only talking about four tonight because I want to be respectful of your time because we can sit here and talk about it for at least an hour or two, to be honest, right? And to get very specific on why your vision board doesn't work, that takes one-on-one coaching. <laughs> so we can, you know, get deep down into those core beliefs and see what's going on, what's that roadblock that's keeping you from manifesting your vision, okay? So... Number four, the fourth reason that we're going to talk about, let me know that you are ready for number four by putting four in the comments. Can you put a four in the comments from me, Instagram? Let me know that you are ready for number four. Let me know, Facebook. Are you ready for the fourth reason? Yay! I, hear the, I see those yeses coming through. God has clean. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight. Thank you so much for joining. We're, okay, you ready for number four? You ready for number four? All right. So the fourth reason that we're going to talk about tonight on why your vision board is not working. I see those fours coming in. Thank you so much. The fourth reason why is because there is no strategy behind your vision. There's no strategy behind your vision that's the reason why your vision boards are not working because if there's no strategy your vision is not going to manifest and you know how i know there's no strategy behind your vision boards because this is what you did literally this is what you did you went and you created this beautiful vision board with all these beautiful gorgeous pictures right and all these Super positive, motivational, you know, uh, quotes on your vision board. And then you hung it on the wall. And then you walked away and went and go watch Netflix or Queen Sugar or Power or something. Where's the strategy, you guys? What you should have done after you created your perfect vision board and hung it on your wall, what you should have done was sat down and devised the strategy on how you're going to manifest that vision. That's what you should have did. And that's the reason why your visions are not manifesting. You guys, we have to have a strategy behind our vision. We have to have a strategy behind our vision. Our thoughts, our actions, the decisions that we make, the people that we are around, the company that we keep, all these things need to be aligned with the vision that we have for our lives. All of these aspects need to be aligned with the vision that we have for our life in order for us to manifest it. Right? Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. Just creating a vision board, creating it, or just visualizing how you want your life to go, it's not enough for you to do just that. It's not enough. You're going to have to take action. You need a strategy. Even the Bible says faith without works is dead. You can have faith, but then you got to put some work behind your faith. Same with your vision board. You got to put a strategy behind your vision in order for you to manifest it, right? You guys, our visions are not one-dimensional. At least I hope your vision is not one-dimensional. If your vision is based off your purpose, if it was divinely downloaded, then it should be multifaceted, right? It's not one-dimensional. So I'm really careful by saying not setting goals per se, but actually creating a strategy for your vision because a strategy is able to, you know, handle the complexity of your vision. Right. And then execute the strategy. Absolutely, Rose. I'm going to need you to execute that strategy. Absolutely. 
Astrology can handle the complexity of your vision. And then when I say complexity, hey, brown sugar, hey, girl, hey, thank you so much for joining me on tonight. And when I, what I mean by complexity, I don't mean that your vision is difficult. I'm not saying that it's hard for you to achieve it. I'm just saying that there is many different levels to your vision, right? So we need to have a strategy in place and then execute the strategy in order to manifest that vision, right? And one of the most important things that we need to have, you know, that our strategy needs to be able to do is that it needs to be able to be flexible. Our strategies have to have some flexibility. We need that flexibility element in it, right? And the reason why is because on our journey, you know, our manifestation journey of our vision, we may get to the point where we need to pivot and go in a different direction. But if there's no flexibility in your strategy, it's going to be hard for you to have that wriggle room, right? Now, please stay with me for a moment, because when I say pivot and go in a different direction, I'm not saying give up on your vision. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you may have to pivot and go in a different direction in order to manifest that same vision that you have. Because sometimes, you guys, we get so caught up or we become so loyal to having our vision come to pass a certain way in a certain manner. You know, I was just talking about this with uh, one of my biz buddies today at lunch. We was talking about this today. We get so fascinated with having something to go a particular way, the way that we want it to go. And sometimes we just need to switch that thing up, right? Think about it for a second. Think about your think about your local grocery store that you go to all the time, right? How many different routes can you take to that local grocery store? Now, for me, I go to H-E-B here in Texas. And H-E-B is like three miles up the road, right? I can tell you about four different ways I can get to the grocery store. How many different ways you guys can get to the grocery store? Put a number in the comment section. Let me see. How many different routes right now? Just off the top of your head, how many different routes can you think of to get to your local grocery store? How many different routes? Latrenda, how many different routes would it take? Three. Brown Sugar said three. Okay. Anybody else? How many different routes? Two. Okay. Two. Two different routes. I can think of four different routes to get to my grocery store. At least three. Okay, Rose says at least three, right? So you can have all these different routes to get to the exact same location. You guys, the destination didn't change. The destination, i.e. your vision, i.e. the grocery store, didn't change. But the route has changed. But you still get into the exact same destination, right? Because depending on where I'm coming from, depending on traffic, or depending on if I need to run by CVS before I go to the grocery store or something, I'm going to take a different route to get there. But my destination hasn't changed. This is why you need flexibility in your strategy. Because your strategy may have to change. You may have to pivot and shift and go in a different direction. But don't change up the vision especially if it's a purpose-filled vision, right? So it's important to have that, that flexibility. It's important to have that strategy in place and to execute it and not be so loyal and married to how the path that you would take to manifest that vision. Because for me to get here, I had to go to law school first. And to be quite honest with you, if I had it my way, I would have skipped over those two loans. <laughs> if I knew that I was going to go to law school and fall out of love with it, I would have just moved to Houston. You know, because my husband was is here in Houston. I would have skipped over those two loans. But, you know, I had to have some flexibility in my strategy because ultimately I wanted to fulfill my purpose. Right. You guys picking up what I'm setting down? Are you breathing in what I'm putting out? <laughs> That's what 
what one of my favorite coaches likes to say. <laughs> Are you breathing in, breathing in what I'm breathing, what I'm putting out? All right. So a quick recap, because those are the four reasons, you guys. So a quick recap of the four reasons why our vision boards don't work is that number one, we've made a vanity board and not a vision board. Number two, we don't believe that we can achieve our vision, right? Number three, we have given up way too quickly on our vision, okay? And number four, there's no strategy behind our vision. There's no strategy behind our vision. So have you guys gotten value on tonight? Let me know. Tell me yes in the comments if this was valuable to you. Let me know if you are ready. Are you prepared to go to that uh, vision board party? Let me know in the comments. Soaking it in. Thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. That's why I'm putting it out there because I want you guys to soak it all in. I want you guys to be. I want you guys to be prepared. Are you guys getting value tonight? Yay! Yay! I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you guys are getting value on tonight. And so I, I got more for you guys. I want to further help you guys out with you know your vision with with helping you to manifest your vision i want to help you out some more so i created a master life class called strategize your vision because there is a particular formula for putting together the right strategy for your vision you guys i'm not saying just sit down and just write something out haphazardly no that's not what i'm saying there's a formula to it and doing my master life class strategize your vision i'm going to teach you that formula because with a rock solid strategy numbers one two and three that we just talked about your strategy will have eliminated all of that off the top it would have eliminated all that off the top because with a good strategy, you would have known early on whether or not you was creating a vanity board as opposed to a vision board. You would have known that with a good strategy, right? And then with, your, with a good, solid strategy, you have the motivation that you need to fulfill that vision. Because when you have a plan of action, that motivates you, right? Because now you have action steps to take. So that's motivation. And a good strategy have elements in there to keep you motivated and inspired throughout the process so you're not giving up so easily on your vision.